Just okay. I'm raising expectations too high. <laughs> um, this, this, this project is led by Waterford Institute of Technology. Okay. Hi, good evening. Uh, thanks uh, for your time. Um, my name is Kim Murphy. This is uh, Eva Hennessy. We're lecturers in the School of Science in Waterford Institute of Technology. And our two other partners in this project who uh, have uh, external commitments are uh, Richard Hayes, who's the head of strategy in WIT, and Marco Dowd, who's a data analyst working in WIT's uh, strategic office. So uh, where did this project come from? It, well, the motivation for this is coming from a number of different levels. Both Aoife and I are lecturers in mathematics and, and at, at all levels in WIT. And we have personal experience of the problem with uh, non-retention in terms of students. Uh, it's, a bigger, it's, it's a bigger problem in first year. It's a bigger problem in terms of computing, disciplines of computing and mathematics. Um, and we see the impact it has on our students. So not only in the students who don't progress, but actually in, in actually class groups themselves. Um, so we trying to see, can we in some way uh, improve on this? Um, while the problem is most prominent in first year and most prominent in the disciplines that we lecture in, this is actually a problem across their entire institute. Uh, and it also, it's not, not just a problem that's limited to WIT. This is a problem across all uh, higher education institutes in, in Ireland. Um, also, to feed into this, um, um, ever since Richard became head of strategy in WIT, um, there's been very much a move to being data aware in terms of how we do our business, how we um, deliver our classes, how we can maximize the use of, the effectiveness, uh, use of our resources, and so on and so forth. So going towards that, um, the strategic office has been developing um, and producing annual reports. So we have an idea as to what we're doing. Um, so far, the, uh, uh, the strategic office has developed reports along, the line, uh, along for, for the workload, the work uh, load allocation, basically describing uh, the timetabling uh, duties uh, and the research responsibilities uh, of various members of staff. Uh, in terms of retention, the, um, the strategic office has been developing reports and uh, retrospective reports on the non on first year non progression for, since 2013. And these reports take a significant amount of work, um, in part because we're drawing from WIT, like pretty much all HIEs. Uh, have a number of disparate systems for storing their data and for, for running their various functions. Um, so in compiling these annual reports, they take a lot of effort in, in drawing stuff from, from Moodle, uh, which is our main uh, um, source of, of online content, uh, drawing uh, from our library access, from our, our admin system from Banner, uh, our, system, our, our timetabling system, Syllabus Plus, and drawing all these stuff into, uh, drawing all this data in order to be able to produce a report takes a significant amount of effort. And we want to build on that. And so the part this where this project uh, comes in is that we want to uh, automate a lot of the stuff that Mark currently is doing by hand. And extend the project so it actually extends to all first years, not just students that we identified as non-progressing. Also be done in real time, hence the need for, for this for the for the data managing to be automated. Uh, as it is, it's a significant uh, uh, component of Mark's year. Uh, and also to widen the sources we're drawing the data from. Um, as an example of the level of effort uh, in terms of dealing with different data sources, we're currently, uh, with the strategic office, uh, developing reports on room utilization. Um, and the main work in there is reconciling the information we have in our separate databases, our timetabling in particular, and our module catalog um, um, banner. So this is this project is is a continuation of some of the, of the current initiatives that the strategic office office has has developed over the last four years, and it's hopefully to get us to a stage at some point, this side of the screen, where we have a really good idea of what we're doing and how we're doing it, and then we can see about how we can actually improve it. Um, in terms, for example, the the non-progression rates, we've been doing that report since 2013, and we have a very clear picture now in terms of how percentage of our students are not progressing and where does it break down in terms of the various departments. And unfortunately, in computing and mathematics, um, it's not so good, um, um, which is common, i say, across the, the, the country. So that's basically where, where, where the project came from. So what, what do we 
what do we, what are we proposing we'll do? We want to develop um, a predictive model, which will allow us to, as early as possible, identify students that are at risk of not progressing. Um, and in the first instance, we're going to focus on our department, Department of Computing and Mathematics. But ultimately, we'd like this, this we'd see this model being extended across the institute. Um, in terms of doing this, it'll have two components. The first component is the actual model allowing us to do predictions. Um, to help us, it'll use a mixture of both pre- and post-registration data um, in order to help us identify students as early as possible. Um, tailored with that, we want to ha we'll have a, a, a suite of interventions um, to, to help the students we identify uh, uh, that are at risk uh, and help them to get over the hurdle. Um, because we are focusing on students, on, our, on, on, uh, on students that we've identified that are at risk, these interventions can be much more tailored. So they're effectively at individual student level as opposed to actually a group uh, um, at, at cohort level. And this complements a lot of the, the, the existing initiatives we have in the college. We have a retention office, we have a, a student uh, health and learning um, uh, office, we have a maths learning centre, which are all really excellent facilities. What happens is uh, our students tend to only engage in those global facilities when they've already half made their mind that they can't handle the material and they're going to leave. And so it's often they're doing it just to flag that they're exiting as opposed to anything else. Um, so uh, in terms of the deliverables, we, where we see we address three uh, uh, of the Delta criteria. Uh, our predictive model will help us to have more evidence-based analysis uh, in terms of retention. Um, our uh, initiatives that we're going to develop will help us improve our learning and teaching practices within our discipline of mathematics and computing. Um, and these initiatives uh, will be are in line with uh, all this three-layered approach. We we'll engage, uh, alert the students, engage them, and inform of, uh, inform them. Uh, and in terms of the wider framework, uh, framework um, uh, we would see that the model that we would develop, while it would be particular to WIT's um, a special case, and um, this model would would have a wider lack of applicability. Um, in terms of the actual breakdown of, of time management of the project, we see this in four phases. Uh, phase one is very much a data analytics its phase. Um, um, we have got buy-in from the various partners within WIT in terms of getting their data. Um, we've been doing this since 2013 in terms of building up the first year, uh, year non-retention -re uh, reports, as I mentioned earlier. Um, but so far, but currently, Manipulating that data in order we can actually generate reports out and, and, and reconciling the data from the various data sources is a huge manual task that is done year on year um, because of the instability in, 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 in various databases that, that we use. So we want to automate that process. Without doing that, we can't make the process in real time. So that's very much the very, the much very, very first phase. Uh, the second phase then that happens in between May and September um, is uh, in involved the, uh, uh, the development of um, the initiatives. And this, we see this uh, being done by talking to the core to students, the first year core to students that, currently, that we currently have who are having difficulty and by engaging with them um, and uh, we would hope to develop various initiatives that we can then apply for the, to, with the following year cohort. Uh, phase three it happens in September in, in 2019 is the, actually is the, the rollout of the model where the model goes live and, uh, and we would hope, we, we're aiming for that by week four we'll have uh, begin to identify students that are, uh, are beginning to have issues and we hope to uh, interact with them as quickly as possible from then on before the issues become solidified, which is very much a problem we would actually see. Um, um, so at that stage interv interventions will be, uh, um, uh, would would be rolled out, and, and there is a continuous monitoring process there in terms of monitoring how well our interventions are actually working uh, and how well are we matching their students' and expectations of how the, the actual process, uh, how, 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 how they actually, um, how it affects them. And the last stage in, in September uh, in, uh, 19 to table uh, 2020 um, involves a retrospective review of the um, of uh, our, how our students have progressed and how the actual model actually has actually worked. Um, in terms of uh, sorry, I in terms of student impact, the big impact we hope is we've less students 
not progressing. Um, um, so when students don't progress, there's a huge financial uh, cost to them, but also there's a huge emotional cost to them. Um, and it isn't um, for, often it isn't for academic reasons why they don't progress. WIT in its vicinity has one of the largest concentration of desk schools uh, in, in the country, and um, we have a lot of students who uh, find it very, very difficult to make the transition from second level to third level. And this is very much a, has happened, uh, sort of exasperated since we, since we went semesterized, since our students now have 12 weeks and then bang, they have to start doing exams, and it's they find it very, very hard to make this transition. So they're just begin to get used to it and then the exams start kicking in. Uh, and we very much find um, when they start having problems at Christmas exams, then they very much disengage in the second semester. And, but so by the end of the first year, they've, they've way too many modules that are repeating in autumn and they never get a break then. So they never catch up uh, and it becomes harder and harder as it goes on. So we very much would like to see if we can improve our progression rates um, or even just lighten the load in terms of our increased number of credits students will get, even if they don't progress. So it facilitates them to move to other courses that might be more suitable. Uh, in terms of the wider inspect, uh, impact for the Institute, uh, one of the action items of our WIT strategic plan is to improve our retention, retention rates by, by 30%. Uh, we don't expect this model to get that. Um, we can't numerically in terms of the numbers because we're only doing one department. But we see it as one component in the overall Institute um, um, suite of, of initiatives. Um, and while the first run of this initiative, uh, project is within our own department, we would see this thing as being scaled across the institute pretty, pretty easily. Um, the actual model itself would be scalable. The interventions are subject specific. But, um, so we would expect in, in terms of other disciplines that they would develop their own corresponding uh, set of, of, of interventions. And this also, this model would also uh, is aligned with um, with, um, with national initiatives and particularly objective four of the HEA uh, system performance uh, framework. Um, um, again, because we, we would see this that the um, it, this would help we, we, students that we I mentioned before very much from from desk schools that uh, we have have the difficulties making this transition from for, from second level to third level. And. In terms of project stability, uh, sustainability, um, this is just one brick in the whole wall or one, one component of a whole suite of tools we have within WIT. This complements the existing um, offices like the, our retention office and our student learning, as I mentioned earlier on, and, and the various other services. Um, but currently, we have a gap. Um, currently, we have a whole lot of data on our students. Um, and we have a whole lot of data on, the, on, our, on our courses. And we're not using them. We're not using this data that we have in order to help us to maximize a student's um, potential to, to progress. Um, and this is basically where this model, where this project fits in. Um, we're hoping to use the information that we actually have and, and uh, in, um, use the information we have in order to give our students the best chance of progressing as we possibly can. Okay, thanks very much. Cheers.